Uh, Mark, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Stephen, uh, Rosemary, I appreciate the work that y'all are doing on this immigration field. Uh, one of the challenges we have in Washington is so many of our policymakers, they have these blinders on. And when you start talking about immigration policy, all they see is the immigrant. And that's it. They don't see the impact of immigration on American citizens. And when I talk about the impact on American citizens, I'm talking about the in income, family income, impact. And so what we have to do is we have to be able to get uh, a lot of our congressmen and senators to take off the blinders so that they can see the whole picture. And if they see the whole picture, then I think we've got a chance of being successful in doing what needs to be done uh, for American citizens. But if we keep on those blinders, then there's going to be hell to pay for American families because they're going to suffer. Uh, I don't know how many times in, in discussing uh, immigration uh, with my fellow congressmen and senators, uh, I feel almost like I'm up against a brick wall because all they, uh, all they see again is uh, the immigrant, and, the, and you've got to have compassion for the immigrants and the plights uh, that they're trying to escape from as they come to the United States of America. If you don't have that kind of sympathy, well then, uh, quite frankly, you're somewhat heartless. But what you have to then look at is the impact on American citizens. Because if you don't look at the impact on American citizens, then you're also heartless because there's tremendous damage being done. And in that vein, uh, I am so thankful for the information that the Center for Immigration Studies is able to provide so that we can look at, with greater understanding, the impact of immigration policy on Americans. Uh, in that vein, uh, I'll use that as an example report that the uh, Center for Immigration Studies put out last summer. And I read the report, and it was somewhat mind-boggling. And the gist of it was, if you look at the economic picture from January of 2000 to January of 2014, a 14-year period, the American economy created a net gain of 5.6 million jobs for people in the 16 to 65 age bracket. 16 to 65 is a pretty big age bracket. And you're thinking, okay, well, it's good to know that our economy is strong enough to create 5.6 million new jobs for people to fill. And then you get into the rest of the report. And of that 5.6 million net new jobs, 5.7 million went to lawful immigrants and illegal aliens, meaning that American citizens who we're supposed to be representing, they're the people who hired us, they're the people who elected us, they had a net loss of 127,000 jobs over that 14-year period. In addition to that, um, because of the net job loss for American citizens uh, coupled with population growth in that 16 to 65 age bracket, there were 17 million more Americans unemployed today, 16 to 65, than 14 years ago. And that's the kind of information that you have to get to the policymakers so that they can take those blinders off and see the full picture. And I'm so thankful that the Center for Immigration Studies uh, does so much work on this particular issue. And I'd be remiss if I did not also add that with respect to Rosemary Jinx, I'm very thankful for what Numbers USA does on, on more of a political level and informational level to help us get the information we need to make the kind of decisions that must be made uh, for our country and for the people who sent us here. Uh, that having all been said, I'm going to touch just a little bit about the legislation that's pending. Let me be real clear in my judgment. Everything we're doing right now in the House of Representatives is political theater, okay? It's well-intentioned political theater. But for us to be able to restrain the president's illegal actions with respect to amnesty and DACA and things of that nature, you have to have the president's consent with the path that is being taken. If the president vetoes this effort to defund these unconstitutional programs, well, then he wins because I don't know of anybody who would suggest that we had the votes to override that veto. Now, we're going to go through this exercise in the House, and hopefully this week we will pass legislation that will help better protect American citizens from the damage that is being wrought by this huge increase, surge in the labor supply because of our immigration policies. Uh, but nonetheless, once we've gone through this political theater and it goes to the Senate, if it passes the Senate and goes to the President's desk, he's threatened a veto, and where are we once that veto is exercised? In my judgment, the only path that we have in Congress to stop the president's illegal conduct with respect to immigration 
is through the judicial system. And the reason I say that is we don't need the president's consent to go to court. The House of Representatives, by way of example, House Resolution 11, if the House of Representatives passes that, then immediately the speaker is authorized to file a declaratory judgment action to determine whether the president's conduct is in accord with the law, and if not, to seek equitable relief, a writ of mandamus, to compel the president to obey the law, and if a, the president does not comport or comply with that federal court order, then our next recourse is contempt of the president with all the kinds of sanctions that federal courts have to compel people to obey the law. Uh, in that scenario, there is no signature of the president needed, so that it doesn't make any difference if the president likes it or dislikes it. He doesn't have veto authority. All we need are the votes in the House of Representatives. We don't even need the Senate to go along with this, and it's a parallel path to what we're now doing with Obamacare, where we passed um, legislation authorizing litigation to challenge in court uh, the constitutionality of the president's uh, Obamacare uh, executive orders. So I would submit that that is the path that we ought to get behind because that's the only one that does not rely on the president's consent to be successful. There'll be a third party, the judicial system, that makes the decision on whether we uh, win or lose. But nonetheless, uh, what Numbers USA is doing, what Center for Immigration Studies is doing, and what you are doing by being here today is critical to this process working properly because information, intellect, having the right information in your hands so that you can make a rational decision is key to making good policy. And that's what this forum is about. I very much appreciate y'all putting it together. And at this point, if you'll please forgive me, we've got a GOP conference that started a few minutes ago, and so I'm gonna have to depart. But I do wanna wish you the best of luck, and I'm very, very thankful for the information that you get to us policymakers, because it's invaluable, at least in my mind, to our making the kind of decisions that the American people expect and deserve.